Thank you for using Victolic tools for Revit. In the last video, I went over creating assembly and assemblies and views. Now I'm going to show how to create bills of material and tag these components. Um, first, what I'm going to do is come come back. I can zoom in. We were, we created this assembly view, and I'm going to zoom in on my 3D view here. I'm going to double click and activate the view. I'm going to use our custom tagging to throw some quick tags on here. So start tagging. Now when you're in an assembly you'll notice, so what I have to do is hit tab once and you'll see now I get the coupling. But now I also get the tag cannot be added to an unlock 3D view. So what I need to do is click OK and escape out of that. Now what you want to do when you're whenever you're in a th whenever you are in a 3D view, you always need to make sure you save the orientation and lock the view. So now that that's locked, I can come in here and start my tagging again. Now I come hover over the pipe and I hit tab. You can see I place like tag on the elbow, tab on the pipe, and now I have my accessory tag. So I can hit cancel, close, and I'll just drag these around where I want them to be. Sometimes, you know, the tag doesn't place exactly where you want, but that's easy to fix. You just come up here and set it that you can move it where you want. And there you go. Now, with the tags placed, I want to create a bill material and I want to automatically apply the numbers to these components. So I can select this spool. I can go to my procurement tool. And that'll scan all those components for the data. Now our procurement tool is a selection-based mater build material tool. Uh, it's, it's the only way inside Revit you can window select a group of components and pull a material list on them. Uh, the, what we're going to use today though is this spool tab. You can see here how it brought out all the different components. It brought in the size, the VIC mark, the system, and the quantities. So what I can do is I have some options here because the way this is shown right now is not the way I typically want to see my bill material. So I can come down in the sorting and I'm going to sort my VIC mark first. Much of the other sorting really doesn't matter, but the most important piece to sort first is your VIC mark. It's going to define the order in which your components are placed. We're able to reorganize the material list any way we want. Um, but if we don't sort by VIC mark first, there's no real way to keep it. So uh, we always sort by VIC mark first and sort ascending, and from there on you can pick any sort you want. Uh, what I typically do is I leave it at category descending, and then I'll come in here and I'll find manufacture, and I'll go descending because I want Victolic first. I'll select on the left side, and I can come up here and put that under category. So it's going to sort Vicmark, Category, Manufacture. Um, instead of Item Count, I want to go Size. And then Description. But I want to move Description up, so it's going to sort Description. I usually go Descending on that too, because then that will put the Victolic stuff up front. Um, the Item Size, I always want my larger sizes on the top and smaller sizes at the bottom. Um, so basically, Vic Mark's the only one go that's going ascending. Now what I'll do is I'll come over here and click the Save as Defaults. Right now, if I don't click Save as Defaults, it'll save per project. So when I go in, into a different project, I'm going to have to reset up these settings. So I typically use the same settings for all projects because we have a, an in-office standard that we use. But if you don't, just don't click the Save as Defaults and you'll find that when you're in that project, It'll always use those settings. But then when you go to a new project, you'll have to define new settings. So I click Save as Defaults, and then I click Apply. Now I'm going to go into Categories, and I'm going to look at my categories. Right now, I can filter by categories if I want. So if I don't want to see pipe accessories, I can have them unchecked. Well, there was a butterfly valve out, out here. I didn't have pipe accessories checked. So if I check it, um, and hit apply, you'll see now the butterfly valve shows up. So I'm going to go back in the categories because I do want to make some changes here. Uh, there's a prefix option. Mm -hmm. Now this prefix option is for when you're doing your tags for your Vic marks. Um, 
if I want to put P in front of pipe and, you know, PF in, in front of pipe fittings, I can add a P prefix and this is where you do it. Um, typically, I don't do this unless uh, there's a need maybe because you're doing a build material on a larger scale for on a lot of components and, it, you know, your, your tags maybe get really busy. Uh, but on ISOs and spools like that, I, I typically will leave these blank. So we're going to click apply and then we're going to go to columns. Now we can reorganize and sort our columns the way we want. I always go with um, uh, Vic Mark on the far left. So we'll move that up. Item count, item size, item description. And I typically don't list out my category and my system. So what we're going to do now is click save as defaults, just like we did before. And we're going to click apply. And I probably want to go back to categories and make sure I save that as defaults too. I don't know that I clicked that. So now I, you can see I have my, my little build material here, but uh, I can move stuff around. Like if I want my valve above my, my couplings, I can do that. Um, I can change my water. No problem. They, you know, it's, it's uses the sorting to start with, and then you can move stuff around. If I want my, my elbow down at the bottom, I can do that too. Now I have the option here. If I come click something up here and I hit control a, that'll select everything. And I can come down here and I can say starting number. So if I want to start my tags at two, let's say, and I can select a format and I can come in here and click auto tag components. And you'll see it just tag the, all the components. And you can see in the background here, how those tags have already been applied to the project. Well, obviously I wanted to start my tags at one. No problem. I can come in here, select all. I can do one of two things. I can come in here and clear all my tags. Typically I only clear tags when I have stuff that's was half tug already and it's creating duplicates in my bill material. So then I clear all the tags, have it resort and combine everything. Cause obviously if one component has one tag and another component has a different tag, they'll, they won't quantify as one. You know, so when you have a one of each, you'll have a quantity one, one instead of a quantity of two. So what I can do is clear it. But in this case, I don't need to. I'm just going to auto tag the components. And I'm going to set this back at zero, one. Then I can run the batch. And you can see now it renumbered everything back at one. So, and, uh, and the way it's, sort, it's keeping my same sort order because I'm sorting by Vic Mark first. So now what I can do is... That obviously that took care of all my Vic, my tagging, numbering, and sequence. Um, now I can also, like, let's say I used our um, pipe tools and sequence my pipe. I can choose not to renumber the pipe just by based on what I have selected. So if I just select the fittings, I can come in here and make those, let's say, 20. And I can go to auto tag components, run the batch. And you'll see that it left the pipe at one. So if my pipe's already tagged, I don't need to worry about, you know, oh, I'm, now I'm going to retag everything. No, it's based on whatever you have selected up here is what's going to tag when you click the batch up, the uh, run batch. So now we're done with that. What I want to do is I want to hit Control A and select everything. Now we have an option down here. It's Copy to Clipboard. It's our Copy to Clipboard button. And what it does is it takes that data and copies it into a format that is easily organized for bringing it into like text into a text box in your view. So we're going to click copy to clipboard when everything's highlighted here. Now we're going to close out the procurement tool. Now what we're going to do is deactivate our view. So now we're back in the sheet. So we want to build material in the sheet. What we're going to do is go to annotate and go to text. And we're just going to drop in a simple text box. And I'm going to hit control V for paste. And you'll see here that it brought in the build material from, from the procurement tool. And I can come in here. This is unfortunately, this is dumb text, but that has benefits and drawbacks because now if I want to add an additional line, I can easily do that. Or if I see a mistake in here, I can easily change something, change something in my bill if I need to. The other benefit to doing it this way is also that if there's changes made in your project and this spool will update automatically, I can come in here and rerun 
my material list and put it below and compare it to what was originally sent. So, and then I can say, oh, I need five more items out at site because, you know, the quantity went up that amount. So it has a lot of value and it's easy to edit. Um, the real reason why we're not using Revit schedules is that with the procurement tool, we're able to pull data out of many different fields. So the size data can come from parameters, can come from the connectors. We're taking maybe four sizes and just listing two. So you're not getting, you know, odd looking bills and material. Your bill material description is coming from a, a, a bill material or description parameter. It's coming from, if that's not there, it's coming from a, a the family name and type. So it's pulling the description from different areas also. Um, the other thing is if I come back in and I go back now, I can select the procurement mm -hmm. tool again. Even though I don't have anything selected, whatever I selected last, mm -hmm. it's going to remember that selection set. Okay. Now, if I go into the part number area of the tool, I can see that there's also a bunch mm -hmm. of other options for me. Um, what I can do is within, within um, Revit, when you're dealing with uh, system abbreviations and system uh, classifications within nested families on fittings they never get the data from their parent so if you have uh, typically what we have is our couplings are nested a lot of times uh, bolt sets and gaskets are all nested families that are found inside a flange or a reducer so to get a schedule out in Revit what we would need to do is push a parameter out to the project so that you can see what system it's on so what we did is we devised a way our tool sees the system on all the components we have in the project um, it's because it's pulling system from various locations also so we can come down here and we can select system to system abbreviation or system abbreviation to vic system so if i run that batch and I click yes, you'll see these VIC systems populate. The VIC system is there so we you can create schedules based on system for all your components. Um, not only schedules though, also views. A lot of times you want 3D isometric views based on system. So you can use the VIC system as a filter, filtering tool, so you can get those system bill material or system ISOs that actually show all the components. Um, we do have inside the part number tab. The, uh, one of the main reasons was to, for this tab was to create part numbers for our components. Um, what you can do is come in here per system. So if I had multiple systems, chill water supply and return, condenser water supply and return, heating water, I can come in here and specify what different uh, finishes and gaskets and, and trim I have on those systems. So in this case, everything's going to be standard painted product with um, EPDM gaskets. So I'm going to save that. Actually, I accidentally hit recall, so you can see what I did on the last project. Well, it turns out that um, I had a chill water supply in there anyway, so it's going to pull that data. So now what I can do is I can populate these part number part numbers. So if I come to summary and I come down here to autocomplete part numbers and run batch, you see it populated the coupling well the out the the um, elbow there must be a few part numbers so if I double click on that component up at the top you'll see it brings up a second window for selecting the part number here I can come in I can see well I obviously don't have a fire lock painted drain elbow I have an IPS mm -hmm. drain elbow so I'm gonna select that and you'll see the part number automatically populate same thing for the butterfly valve well the butterfly valve is a little more complicated I have to come in here I can sort it by description and I know I need um, looking at this 10 position handle, well, that's actually a gear operated one. So we're probably looking at this one, that one there. So when you double click it, it's going to put in the part number. Uh, pipe, we don't have any part numbers in the database. So, uh, if there's a need for part numbers for, for pipe, you know, that's something we'll have to look at. That actually you could drive, um, pretty simply by making that a, a, um, adding a parameter in there, a type parameter to drive that. Um, so I can also come down here, if I select all these components at, up at the top, I can add VIC areas to them. Uh, these are other additional parameters back in the project. And, you know, VIC bag tag, maybe that's another one. I can populate these. Um, 
you can also do this back in the project. The only benefit of doing it in the Victolic procurement tool is that if there's nested families, this data will go down into those nested families without the um, parameters being linked. If you haven't done a lot of family editing, you don't understand what I'm saying, but uh, this does make your family creation and modification a lot easier um, by being able to push data out quickly. So, and then I can click update and you can see those those lines have been updated for all these components. Okay. Now I did, I left my vendor at Victolic and, and my standards Imperial. So if I have a metric job, I can come up here and choose metric and you can see my size is automatically flipped to metric. Um, so it works for, you know, both sides, you know, so if you're doing using metric in your projects, you're fine here too. So what I can do now is I can jump, we have a labor and price tab if I come in here now that I applied part numbers over here I can come over to labor and price and if I have a labor rate I don't know I'm just gonna guess and put 90 in there I can hit refresh and I can see that it stops starts to po populate pricing and costs and and uh, between MCA labor and Vic labor um, the MCA labor is using our standard groove method uh, the Vic labor is using our installation ready couplings um, so you can see there's a significant savings just in a few fittings, you know, with our installation ready uh, components. Now with multipliers, we're able to apply some basic multipliers for pipe accessories, pipe fittings and pipe. Um, you know, this is something that, you know, obviously it's not going to match the way multipliers are in real life, but it'll get you fairly close. And it's an interesting quick little bill material, quick little price and labor comparison, um, you know, that you can create from your model. There's also the ability to export this table. Also out here in part number, we can export a detailed list of all the material here. So if I click that, um, you can come in and I'm just going to save that as a test file on my uh, desktop. And it'll open and you'll see in here. So from that selection, it gave me quite a bit of data for a quick bill material. So if you want to create your own purchase order or maybe you know you want to take this data and tie it into your own automatic system uh, for purchasing you can do that it's all available um, what we do in house is we have uh, an access bill material that we use because a lot of times we create eight and a half by eleven t or eight and a half by eleven uh, bill materials and uh, instead of creating those uh, through Excel or something, we use Access and we'll dump this and we'll, we'll create a bill material on the whole project and dump all the data out to Access. And it just consumes this spread, this CSV file. And uh, we can, in a few moments, we can have a complete uh, system bill material, header and drops, you know, however we want it broken down. So that's a quick, easy way to export data out. And I'm not going to save that. So, you know, I went through all the tabs here. Uh, we tip, if you don't use AWWA and you don't use plain end products, you can leave these checked. Um, what that'll exclude is when you're doing part numbers, it won't populate, it won't give you the option when you double click the fitting. So when I click this fitting, if there was a plain end option, it might show up here. But since I have those checked, it won't. It's not going to exclude it from the list. So if you do have AWWA products on your project and you didn't realize it, it'll still be in your list here, but you won't get the option to put part numbers on. So just keep that in mind. That's what that's about. And we do have that same categories button in here. Um, you know, just make sure that all your categories are checked on uh, unless you want to filter out pipes for some reason and you can filter out pipes. Uh, other than that, that's that's the uh, what's included in the procurement tool. Um, you know, the, the big tab that most people use is is in this spooling tab, and this allows you to get those quick bills of material on your ISOs and your fab sheets. Thank you.